What's up, math fans? My goal today is to be able to write an equation of a parabola given a focus and a directrix. And those are two new words, so I'm going to get into what they mean in a second. But right now, equation of a parabola, think about what a parabola is. It's the graph of a quadratic function. Uh, we talked about quadratic equations already. We talked about what the parabola looks like. It could open upwards, kind of a U-shape, or it could open downwards. We talked about the vertex of a parabola. We even talked about equations. So it could either look like this, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or it could look like this, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now, this one, uh, I think they're equally easy, but this one is slightly more useful because this is what's called vertex form. So if you see it like this, you can right away pick off what the vertex is. The vertex, by the way, is h comma k, where the h, notice there's a minus sign here, so your h is the opposite sign of whatever you see in there. So if you saw x minus two, the h would be positive two. If you saw x plus two, the h would be negative two. It would be the opposite of what you see inside. Outside is exactly what you see. Um, all right, so the technical definition of a parabola is the set of all points that are equidistant, equal distance away from a point and a line. That point is called a focus and the line is called a directrix. So I need to figure out points that are equally apart or equal distance from the focus and the directrix. And that's kind of fancy talk for in between or the middle. So if I need something at equal distance from the focus and the directrix, I'm gonna just find the middle. So I can almost ignore the whole line of the directrix and just find this point right here, which is right underneath the focus. So they're vertical. And guess what? The point right in the middle is the midpoint. So you can use the midpoint formula here, or you can just count boxes to find the middle. So this happens to be point six comma two, and this happens to be point six comma six. So if you're trying to find the middle of six two and six six, you can use your midpoint formula. Basically, you're looking for the middle of two and six. So let's see, that's two plus six, which is eight. Eight divided by two is four. So this is gonna be six comma four. So the middle is six comma four. But that's just one point. If you rewind this thing, you'll see that I said the definition is all points, the set of all points that are equidistant. So what happens is this point is also the same distance from the focus and the directrix. This point is also the same distance from the focus and the directrix. They have to be the same distance away. Basically what happens is it opens up into a parabola. So this shape here, and please keep in mind this is not drawn to scale, that blue parabola is the set of all points equidistant from the focus and the directrix. Um, it's gonna get slightly more complicated and then it'll get easier. So basically, if I take any point on the parabola, so if I took this random point right here, which is not 6, 4, because I'm pointing at 6, 4 down there, right? So I take any random point on the blue curve, so I can erase that not to confuse you. Um, I don't know what the coordinates are, because it could be any point. It could be a little bit above or a little bit below of where I chose. So the coordinates would then be x comma y. Any point should be the same distance to the focus and to the directrix. Remember, it's not drawn to scale, so it looks a little bit off. But mathematically, this distance should be the same as this distance. And that is why you're gonna need the distance formula. I hope you're comfortable with it. All right, so we're gonna set distances equal to each other. The distance from x, y to the focus is equal to the distance from x, y to the directrix. I'm gonna to get to that in a second here. So you're gonna be given a focus, you're gonna be given a directrix, and they're gonna say, please write, I'm gonna say, or your test might say, please write the equation of this parabola. What is the equation of all points that are equidistant from the focus and the directrix? So if you wanna visualize it, I'll graph it. Here's one comma two on a graph, right? And the directrix is y equals negative two. Remember, y equals is a horizontal line. It is possible to have a vertical directrix, but not in this video. Um, y equals negative two would be down here, and there's my directrix. So now I need to find the parabola. Well, easy to find the middle. The middle of um, two and negative two is zero. So my vertex is gonna be right there at one comma zero, and then it's gonna open up something like 
that. There's my parabola, all right? I just need that equation. So basically, you need to understand that the distance from any point, let's say here, x comma y, the distance from x, y to here is equal to the distance from x, y to here, okay? So basically, you're looking for a formula using distance from x, y to the focus. What's the focus? Oh, it's given to you. It's 1, 2. 1, 2 is equal to the distance from also x, y to this point right here, the point vertically underneath the x, y, vertically underneath x, y, which is right here, which is on the directrix. I don't know what the x value is, so I'll call it x again, but I do know that the y value was given as negative 2, so x comma negative 2 to x comma negative 2. So this distance from here to here equals this distance from here to here. And now we just use the distance formula. So that's the square root of, uh, I'm going to go this way, x2 minus x1. So that's x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared. Notice I'm using this formula here. If it helps you to label your points first, maybe you should. So this I would say is x2, y2, and this one is x1, y1. So it's this minus this squared plus this minus this squared. And I'm going to do the same thing. So you can relabel again x2, y2, and x1, y1, and do it again. So that distance has to be equal to, so I set it equal to, the distance from x minus x squared plus y. y minus negative 2 squared is really y plus 2 squared. y plus 2 squared. Notice numbers inside are opposite of what they were originally. So y minus negative 2 becomes y plus 2. So to keep change, change. Okay, now... It looks hard, looks complicated, overwhelming. It actually simplifies very nicely. First, you want to get rid of those giant square roots so you can square both sides and things are already getting simpler because the giant square roots are now gone. Goodbye. Notice x minus x is nothing, zero. If I square zero, it's still nothing, zero. Goodbye. Now we can start to do some math. I'm going to drop down x minus one squared because it comes out of the radical since the radical is canceled. Y minus two squared, I could drop it down. I'm actually gonna write it uh, as Y minus two times Y minus two. Something squared means write it twice and multiply it out using FOIL. I'm gonna skip the FOIL step. You should probably do the FOIL step on the side. You'll get plus Y squared minus four Y plus four equals. That's gone, so now I gotta drop this down. I'm gonna get Y squared plus four Y plus four. Again, I wrote it twice, and I FOIL, I use FOIL. Um, what's cool about this is a lot of things are going to clean up. I'm going to subtract y squared from both sides, and they will cancel. Goodbye. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, and they will cancel. Goodbye. Here, I'm going to add 4y to both sides. Okay, so I subtracted y squared, and it canceled. Subtracted on both sides, of course. I subtracted 4 and it canceled from both sides, of course. And here, we're going to clean it up. Here's what you're left with. x minus 1 squared drops down. This is gone. Goodbye. Equals, uh, what is this? 8y. That's it. Everything else is gone. So it's nice and clean. What's my goal? To write an equation of a parabola, these are my equations. Notice how y is alone. I'm trying to isolate the y. So let me get rid of that 8. Divide by 8. Goodbye divide by 8, and I am done. You can leave it like this, but actually, if you notice, I want my coefficient to be in front of the parentheses, so I have to make this really clear. There's a 1 there, and you can rewrite it as y equals 1 eighth x minus 1 squared. And that is your equation in vertex form, which is useful because I see that the vertex is 1, positive 1, see it switched positive one comma zero, which you kind of already knew, but you didn't know that the coefficient was one eighth. You know what one eighth means? A fraction coefficient makes the parabola wide. All right, so there is how to do it. Let's try it again, pause it, do it on your own, and then watch me. So I need a visual, I'm gonna graph two comma negative three. Let's see, one, two, one, two, three, that's right here. Uh, one, y equals one is up here. Wait a minute. 
This time the, the focus is down and the directrix is up. So let's see the middle. This is at one. This is down at negative three. So the middle is negative one. Two spaces down, two spaces up. So the middle is at negative one. And this time the parabola opens downward. And you can plan ahead for that knowing your A, your leading coefficient, better come out to be negative. But again, the distance from any random point from here to here has to equal the distance from here to here. So let's see. This is xy. So from xy to 2, negative 3 has to equal from xy to x comma 1. Okay? This point, remember, is x comma 1. This point is 2, negative 3. So from here to here equals from here to here. All right. That just means you're doing two distance formulas. It's overwhelming, but it's not difficult. You're just doing two problems in one. That's what Algebra 2 is all about. You double the work. So let's see. Um, same thing. Square root x minus 2 squared plus y minus negative 3 becomes y plus 3 squared equals x minus x squared, a giant radical of course, x minus x squared plus y minus 1 squared. And if you were paying attention in the last one, a bunch of stuff is going to cancel. The giant radicals, if I square both sides, will cancel. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. X minus x squared, goodbye. And then you just got to show, remember, you don't need to foil this out. You don't need to expand this. You just drop it down as x minus 2 squared plus, here I'm going to do foil, y plus 3 plus times y plus 3. So that's going to give me y squared plus 6x plus 9 equals y minus 1 times y minus 1 is y squared minus 2y plus 1. So what happens here, hmm, uh, the y squares will cancel if you subtract y squared on both sides. Let me bring this 6x over here. Oh, I made a mistake. Thanks for catching me. This is actually a 6y. I've made that mistake before. So I hope if you make it, you'll catch it just as quickly. This is actually a 6y came from the y plus 3 squared. So I'm going to subtract 6y on both sides. And while I'm at it, let me bring the 1 over to this side because my goal is to get y alone on one side. So that'll cancel, that'll cancel. x minus 2 squared, um, gone, gone, plus 9 minus 1 is plus 8 equals negative 8y. How do I get the y alone? We divide by negative 8. We divide by negative 8. We divide by negative 8. Notice I do it everywhere, all my terms. Now y is alone. Hopefully you can see this. This becomes negative. There's still a 1 there. Negative 1 8. x minus 2 squared. 8 divided by negative 8 is minus 1. Minus 1. And there is my equation. Notice my vertex is 2, negative 1. I already knew that. And my coefficient is negative. That's why it's upside down. So it all makes sense. Thanks for watching. See ya.